Welcome back to part two of my print portfolio video series. Today's video has six, five or six projects, some standard gig poster stuff, some prints that were a part of a traveling art show called Art Crank, some prints that were a part of a skate festival, a traveling skate festival, uh, a project that just about ate me up that I was able to turn around somehow and make do. The resulting prints are absolutely beautiful. And then two of my favorite projects that I've ever had a, a hand in. Uh, one was done as a studio, anti Designs a studio, collaborated with all of my staff and we turned out an album release party that included prints on wood, prints on paper, uh, sculptural prints. The last part of this video is my favorite project that I've ever been a part of. I collaborated with some uh, different artists from town, from here in Boston, and we created an installation inside of a shipping container. I don't even know how to describe it. It was just incredible and completely different. Stick around to the end, check that out. This print was created for Zarface. We were a part of their second album release and we created a whole art show to hype the event. We basically filled an entire gallery full of prints that we made. A bunch of them were on wood panel. Some of them were on paper like this one. The whole team at Anti Designs was involved in the creative as well as um, the production of this. These two prints are four color CMYK prints, kind of in this like Polaroid format. We were just given everything they had in terms of artwork for Zarface. Album covers, little bits and pieces of graphics that L'Amour Supreme had created. We were like, what would be cool? That was an art show. What would we want to see? What would, what would people want to buy? It was like all the things. I have always said that Anti-Designs is a shop that's made up of artists first and printers second. And this was that magical place where the art and the print came together. And we did some wild stuff for this show. We created like nunchucks that had MF Doom symbol and a Zarfe symbol on them. We printed with etch on glass. That was, that was the scariest thing that I've ever done as a printmaker. I found this mirror at this um, like antique spot that had this like round top. We decided to print, <laughs> I can't take credit for it. I was completely peer pressured into printing with etch. Somebody came into the studio to pick up and this person just happened to have etch on him. And you read the label for this stuff and it says like, you can die from this. I had people working for me at that time and there was no way in hell anybody was going to touch that stuff except me. So I put on like three pairs of gloves, every piece of safety equipment that I possibly had. I ended up printing it with a wood screen and I pulled it through. It was just like one of those things where you have one chance to get it right and you just cannot fuck it up. The print came out great. We ended up selling that piece. It was just a crazy, amazing project. This is a print we did for the Dew Tour. This was the 2016 version. It's a four color print. I have this because it's a misprint. The red is off. It was fun. They asked us to do another print the next year. This print was so hard and not because it was so hard, but because our output printer was busted at the time. So it's a six color 1824 print. They ordered a hundred and we had to print them by hand and I couldn't print films and the deadline was coming. And it was just like, how are we going to do this? And we ended up asking friends for how to, how to make this happen. And my friend Helen from Trifecta recommended we use an acetate process for our films, which works for her and her exposure unit. It was okay, but it, it was new. Anytime you try to reinvent the wheel when you need to do something really hard, you're up against it. This was one of those things. This artwork was by Jimbo Phillips, so I wanted to do it justice. It's sick. And it just, the when I went to go burn the screens, the acetate, for whatever reason, made the screens really waxy. It was either I was under or overexposing. Our fundamental system was, was not there. And the things that we relied on, we were out in the woods. So I was able to pull this off and to deliver prints that I was happy with, but it was 600 very tough, very stressful prints. This is a beautiful print. 
We did a couple different editions of this for my friend Sophie Greenspan. I believe these were made for a project called Art Crank. Art Crank was a traveling art show where all of the artwork was created by local artists, printed by local printmakers, and the artwork was bike themed. This was done with water-based ink and metallic gold. This is a print that I made for my friend Kenji. This print was a challenge just to get these pieces printed properly. And Kenji had this like scientific um, formula for exactly where the print should lay. The colors are really cool. Um, I did a stack of these for him. Nothing ever came of it. If anyone is interested in this print, please let me know. This is a, <clears throat> a beautiful print that we made for Ben Shone. Just two different, very elegant half tones with some very well placed type. This was another challenge, big time challenge. Um, these were done for an artist through House Aru. This is a five color print with two colorways. Each of the two colorways is a little bit different. I was able to use the same films for both of the colorways and keep the same print order, but the colors had to be changed. And I needed to do a proof on both of these prints in order to make sure that the colors were just right. And it's five colors here and five colors here and one print. <laughs> so I did proofs of both and the colors weren't right. So I had to go back and get them right. And I mean, that's to do these things, manual printing, 10 colors, five screens. That's like a day's work. I personally love screen printing. Screen printing has been my life for the last 10 years. I've been full time with anti-design since 2011. Anti-design started in 2004. So, you know, I was seven years into a side thing, decided to make it a full-time thing. It's been able to support my life and my lifestyle for 10 years. But when you have days like that, where you just put all your energy into something that wasn't right, and you have to start over tomorrow in the morning, and you're not even sure if it's gonna be right then, it, uh, it, you check yourself on you know what you're doing, why you're doing it, how you can do it better, and how you can keep going forward without making those types of mistakes. Personally, I feel like I like this pink version better for some reason, I'm not sure why. These prints are super tight. They're, these are not misprints. I felt because the uh, the proofs did not go right, I wanted to make sure that these were 100,000%. And when they were, I was really happy with that. And I felt like that was the success of the prints and the colors like made good on the difficulty through the proofing phase. This is another personal piece. This is a portrait that I made for a show called Neon Dream. So I originally created this owl piece because I had uh, like an encounter with uh, this type of owl where this like great horned owl was in this tree and I was walking under it and it was like hooting at me. And it was just like a monstrous bird. And I wasn't really into owls at that time, but I had three different encounters with different owls and I just like started digging into them a little bit and researching and they're so cool. I've had a lot of thoughts about people's reactions to portraits of people versus people's reactions to portraits of animals because when you draw a portrait of a person, when someone sees it, they'll say, who is that? Or that is this person. And I think that there's a, a very natural question of why did you draw that person? Or why did you draw that person in that way? And Nowadays, we all need to think about, you know, who are you and why are you drawing that person? Whereas when I see people looking at my animal portraits, it's not like, what owl is that? It's like, that's an owl. That's a owl. <laughs> it's not like, what's that owl's name? Or, you know, what's your relationship with that owl? Or why did you draw that owl? It's just an owl. And I think that that's different when you get into like dog portraits and stuff like that. Um, and that's totally cool. But this particular piece, this version of the owl print, after discussing with my friend Helen to do 
the animal portraits at this event called Hub Week. And Hub Week was held in downtown Boston at the time. And it was this really strange event where you had huge corporate sponsorship, Bank of America and TD, Gar like big money, corporate money. And then you had like arts and sciences. So you had all these technology, like new technologies. Um, and then you had all these artists and they basically, that that's what they were doing was they were bringing all these things together on purpose. It was really cool. And we, we created a proposal and got a certain size shipping container to do an installation in. And myself, Trifecta Editions, Cyril, Steez, we, we all collaborated on this shipping container. And we did it a whole, they basically just give you a blank shipping container and you can do whatever you want with it. And we decided to do this like neon grotto thing that we called Neon Dream. And inside of it, we installed all these black lights and they were like top of the line black lights. And we created all this wallpaper inside of the, the shipping container. And then we did all these installations. And part of my installation were these neon black light reactive animal portraits. So these are some of the other animal portraits. This is a tiger that I did, camel, and this hawk. Again, I repurposed some of the halftones that I had done that in this like stylized halftone format. And when these things glow under the black light, the white paper is blue, like neon blue. It's beautiful. And so these, each one of these prints has like, you know, two versions, uh, a regular light version and a black light version. I was really, really happy with what happened here with the like negative space whiskers and that was a big win. And on this piece, like not using an outline was a big deal for me. It's like just leaving this raw, I felt like that was personal growth and development as an artist. And then these are some leftover prints from the wallpaper. And <laughs> what was challenging about this wallpaper was that it had to be seamed. It had to be seamable, you know, and they needed to be able to kind of have like a little bit of a margin of error, you know, as you like, as you're pacing things up, if you're doing like 15 feet of wallpaper, if you have a little mistake way over here, you know, like 10 feet away over here, that becomes a very big mistake over there. Um, as things, you know, like a little bit crooked, becomes very crooked after 10 feet. So I, I worked really hard and spent a lot of time in figuring out how to do this little overlap thing so that there would be some, some room for error. And we decided to do uh, a big gradient within the room. So the room itself was like, at the center, we used the colors that glow the most, which is this um, neon yellow, neon green. So basically it, was, it wasn't about being inside the room, it was about entering the room. So as you enter to this, as you enter from the outside, it actually gl glows brightest in the middle. So as you're entering it, it's like getting warmer and warmer and warmer in terms of that glow. And this was a lot because these are 12 and a half by 19 pieces. And we, we pasted the entire inside of the shipping container. For whatever reason, I had a, a lot of problems with the neon ink the fluorescent speedballs. They were just like eating through my emulsion. And that never happens with speedball for me. Um, I never really have a problem, I use QTX. And figuring out how to wheat paste and um, seaming these up and you know managing all the other parts of that project, it was so much stuff and so much work. Helen and Morgan from Trifecta created all these like crystals that were also done in fluorescent inks and everything was just uh, glowing everywhere. There was actually a scorpion in the room and scorpions are black light reactive. Uh, we had like an infinity mirror. People lined up to get into that shipping container. Everybody was talking about it. I'm not like toot my own horn. It was a big success and uh, we were on the front page of the globe. Every time I look back at the photos of that project, it was just such a great, it was awesome.